Hi, is it me you're looking for? And I said, hello, it's hello, it's hello. It's hello. It's hello. Hi, you. Hey, hey, <laughs> is it me you might be looking for? You might, who knows? I like talking through lyrics like that. Hey, karma police. <laughs> I've given all I can. It's, it's not enough, but I've, <laughs> I've given all I can. And Doug, hey. you don't need to put on a red line. <laughs> oh, shit. Do you, are you going to do the clap? Oh, I should do the clap. All right, clap. I'd feel take 14. Day, day two. It's <laughs> <laughs> such a shit clap. Oh, oh you, know, you, you know what that clap is like? It's like you're a politician. Politicians are the worst clappers in the world. Uh, so is Naomi Campbell. Have you ever seen her she's clap? A, she's a bad clapper. She's a really bad clapper. Have you ever seen Naomi Campbell clap? Not Naomi no. Campbell. Nicole Kidman. Naomi Campbell's also, a fantastic no. clapper. Nicole Come Kidman, on. terrible. Um, I've never been to like a sporting match or anything like that. Where God, really... I do love a sporting match. <laughs> I did that for you because I know that... <laughs> ah, the teams. The games. <laughs> the games. We're sitting once again on top. <laughs> what do you mean once again? Uh, There's a backstory here. Okay, I'm going to come straight with you guys, uh, beloved listener. Uh, this is the second time we've had to do this interview <laughs> because I made a whoopsie. We got through the first incarnation, which was hilarious. Yes. And... <laughs> I, I, it just didn't record. It, it went, it went a little bit. It recorded. It just, yeah. So basically, aired. we're gonna do the same jokes, try and do them word oh, for word. Oh man! Yes. Uh, I mean, I've not changed any of my questions. I remember everything. Uh, that sweet, sultry voice you can hear is the <laughs> timbers of the Portuguese artist <laughs> Diogo Machado, oh, also perfect. known as Ad Fuel, aka yes. Wood. Oh. How did you come up with that information like so early <laughs> in this conversation? Should we just skim through the first <laughs> sort of 16 years of your life? <laughs> covered that already. Because we lost all of it. Um, yes, hello, my name is uh, Diogo Machado. I come from Portugal. Um, uh, my name is, uh, artist name is Adfuel, or at the time uh, was also known as Adfuel to the Fire. Then I quit doing that because it was so long. Uh, even way back, uh, I used to do some graffiti. It was a really bad one. Uh, I go, would go by Wood, W O O D. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I you know I grew up in in Kishkais, uh, you know, really close to Lisbon. Uh, halfway between Kishkais and Lisbon, there's a place called Carcavelos, birthplace of graffiti in Portugal. Uh, big up to the guys from the PRM crew, like big inspiration. And, and there we, we are go. today. That was your podcast. Yes. Uh, we really got our, just like well, that's, that's, just like that was good. To Vans for bringing us out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, so well, we're gonna have to go on a different tack then, are we? Okay. No, this is that's that's good because we can get that all out of the way. I didn't We're realize I could speak English that fast until now. Uh, I am now considering my life options to be a rapper. <laughs> that actually was a good, there was a good texture to that. Yeah. If, if you were going to be I a try. rapper, would you stick with the name Adfield or would you take nah. a different name and what would that name be? I would go with Thunderfists. Uh, uh, DJ, uh, MC Thunderfists. Hell yeah. Wait, I think Adfield is a good hip hop name though. I know, but Adfield is already taken as an artist from what I heard. <laughs> so I would go, I would go Thunderfists. Yeah. <laughs> Because it, you know, it connects with lightning, oh, I lightning said and fuel. Fists. Hmm? I thought, I thought he, he did too. Tender fists. So now your English isn't is, that great. Which is kind of, it's a little bit more sexy than thunder fists. I'm sorry, I'm not a native <laughs> English speaker. Neither is Doug. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've done the Miami Art Week now for a few years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm now serenading you. <laughs> you painted a mural in town, and right. I, we were talking about this yesterday. Let's bring it up again. <laughs> um, you're really smart with the way you plan this week. Get the work done last week, right? And yeah. now, sort of go and see stuff. Uh, last year, as uh, was such an intense experience for me, I was like working constantly. I did three murals last year, including the one at Jackson Post Clubhouse, as you might know. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, so I was like constantly working, and I also wanted to, you know, be present at the fairs. I wanted to, you know, hang out with people, get to see people that we only actually get to see here in Miami, uh, you know, and just uh, take my time and I, that was not possible so this year I tried to plan it differently um, I have a good presence in the art fairs this year so I thought well I'm just gonna go for one mural um, try to make it as nice and as, as it's been a good year for you hasn't it it has been a good year for me I cannot complain yeah it's, it's well he a became a grown-up you became a grown-up 
Yes. Did, in, I, many, in many ways, you in many ways. You, you took that jump yep. into yep. noticing that the the amount that was being asked of you required you to build a team around yep. you that could help yep. sustain building this budding career. Right. right? So yep. what like what does that mean? Exactly. Well, that means that, you know, early this year, uh, I got, uh, you know, I had the year like planned out and I thought, well, I'm not going to be able to do this all by myself. If I want to like, if I want to keep the, the quality of my work, if I want to um, keep it with my, my standards, you know, I, I had to put like a small team together. I have uh, Adrian, my, my buddy, uh, like full time working me, uh, at, uh, working with me. Uh, um, and I had to open up a, a company, so I'm not no longer like a freelance uh, artist. You know, I'm like super official. Uh, I have someone taking care of logistics and emails. So like a small team, I had, I had to put it together, or else I would not be able to take on all of these projects that I want to be a part of. You know, um, yeah. And professionally, that was a, a step. It was a were you nervous step. taking on those extra people? Because I mean, we speak to such a huge range of right. artists from different backgrounds, different ways of operating. And there are no shortage of artists that are just like, look, I'm getting it, I'm getting the offers, but I just, I can't, I can't put this trust into someone else to to do this. Even answering my emails, mm -hmm. I can't do this. And for you then assembling this team, there has to be a huge amount of trust, especially if it's a, uh, oh yeah, you know, yeah. something so personal. So yeah. how how was that for you, and how did you find? doing that or how have you found doing that is it do you still kind of hold on to it as your babies or have you managed to step back a little no i mean i think it's a it's a, i think it's a mental exercise like it's, it's something that you need to do if you want to you want if you want to delegate you need to let go of those little uh, details that you like you know if you are a solo artist for such a for such for, for a long time and you get used to you know taking care of everything so once you delegate, you have to let go of the little details, you know. There's, of course, like this um, trial period. That's not a trial period, but something like, you know, you, you have to talk with, with the people that are working with you and, like, tell them, look, this is how I usually do things. Do you have an opinion? Do you, how, how, how can we make it better? Or is it the way that I've been doing this a good way? So it comes, like, in a back and forth uh, relation. Uh, you know, with with uh, with Adrian, you know, me, we have we've worked for for some time before. We just made it official this year. Uh, with Diana, I, I I used to work before. She she used to work uh, in a gallery uh, in Underdogs in Portugal. Well, it's working out. Luckily, if not, I'm gonna kick them out and be yeah. solo again. Well, <laughs> have you ever had to take no. on Have you ever had to take on a role like that before? Sort of project no. just manager. Just no, no, I just pound on the table. Yeah, like this is not working. No, oh, no. Okay. Do you no, see yourself going full dictator? Um, no. You already uh, had to do that with your art. You don't need to do that with. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Correct. No. 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 I'm not that kind of. I'm like super chilled. I'm. I'm. I. I. I, I find a hard time like with conflicts. So I. Would, it, I think I'm not a good boss. By the way. Well. <laughs> well. Like, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's okay. Like, <laughs> I need to pay rise. Okay. <laughs> There's an interesting. You're great. You want to paint it green? Okay. The theme. Know. The theme that I've, I've noticed is that the power of being able to say no every once in a while. To, to things that if you feel like you, it's not what you want to do like have has it been liberating a little bit to be able to now really be able to say no to certain things and really be able to focus on other things like the power you know I think there's a real agency in being able to say no I don't want to do that yeah yeah I mean I, I I've Luckily, I, I've you know I've been having a lot of proposals for good projects for and of course for not so good projects and the the, the option to say no I don't want to be a part of this project the ones that I accept then I can like focus 100% on them and are the ones that are do them and and make them like um, as best as possible so I mean uh, the, that, the 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 notion of a starving artist you know luckily and you know praise all the whatever you believe in. Um, <laughs> that's a very diplomatic way Yes, to say. yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that's, that, that empowers you, you know? It makes you, you know, I want to do this, I don't want to do this. Has this been a natural, steady progression from you that, for you then? Like, what was your, I guess we should talk about, you know, your entry point. And, you know, I don't want to rehash what has already been talked about in previous interviews as well, right, about right. how you got into it and your background. But was this just a natural, steady progression from, you know, from starting out doing ceramics around the street right. into into this, or was there a period where you were off, you know, working in a bar or doing something else, or was this just kind of the the way it's naturally flowed out? No, I think for me um, it was like a very natural evolution. You know, I I started out my my 
my college uh, university. How do you, is it the same thing? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. roughly. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so I, I did graphic design. I'm a graphic designer by 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 diploma. By, yeah, How yeah, do you call yeah. it? I don't know. Your studies were in graphic my design. My studies were in graphic design, but I, I I didn't practice. I didn't practice that much. I worked in some some design studios for a couple of years. Um, but I've always been like my thing has always been drawing, and I've been drawing like since forever since I was a kid. Uh, always remember drawing on everything. Um, but then my you know my, my my progression was from graphic design like slowly quitting graphic design and uh, going into illustration. So it was like a process from graphic design to illustration to working, uh, you know, starting to work with the with the patterns, uh, ceramic patterns, you know, related, uh, and then starting to explore how would the ceramic, how could I work the ceramic in the studio, and then going into murals, you know. So it was like a process. It was um, it was kind of a, uh, something that was flowing, you know. And I've been doing this since what 2000 and seven full-time 2008 I'm not sure where, where was the like point this. that you thought this is this is what I'm gonna do oh that was 2007 2008 as I just mentioned yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no the it? thing no but that, that yeah, was, that's when it became that real it. for you yeah exactly yeah. because <clears throat> sorry because I you know I, I, I was as, as I mentioned I was working as a graphic designer I, I was I was working in Munich in in Germany um, I came back to Portugal uh, you know, and at the time I came back, I was lucky enough to come back to a project it was like super fun. I got to meet all these like Portuguese graffiti and street art, uh, street artists that are doing well, quite well right now. You know, that's when I met Alex Vils. That's when I met, uh, you know, all of these other guys from, from the Visual Street Performance Crew. You know, Mar Rum, Clit, all these guys. Uh, I also met uh, Miguel Moore, which is now like the, the main like writer for, for Vils, you know. So I met all these, these people. And at the time, I was like, "Well, this is it." I came all the way from Munich. I went, I went back to Portugal. I quit doing graphic design. I was like, "I'm going to focus on my illustration." And in what I, in what way, I thought, "Well, how can I like apply my art to the walls?" But and, you know, it kind of uh, came side by side with the ceramics. You know, so so that was that was a turning point back then. Yeah, yeah was like, it right there? Was it rare for somebody of at that time your age to be? taking on this sort of old school kind of craft style i mean were you kind of an outlier in that in that yeah, sense yeah for sure and I, you know and I, and I think you should really we should talk about since we we did talk about it a lot at length yesterday talk about <laughs> oh, a little we? bit about like the tradition of <laughs> yeah portugal's Port, portuguese tile mm -hmm. tile making ceramics and the, just like you coming at it yeah. at, a, at a young age and how that maybe came about yeah i mean it's it's, it's a tradition with centuries, you know, back in Portugal. And this is, you know, my main influence comes comes from the visuals, from the tile pattern. Mainly, mainly the patterns because, you know, uh, tile panels, they can be like scenic, they can be portraits. I mean, but I, my, my thing is the patterns, as, as, as you might know, as you might notice from my work. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, and, and, and that, that was like, uh, that is something that I really like to explore. But, you know, everything I learned is, uh, I had no training at all. It's like trial and error, you know? It, it's studying you're on your own. Uh, studying on my own and trial and error at the studio. Like, oh, is this going to work? Is it not going to work? Reading the labels of the, of the, the products, you know? And like, I, I bought a kiln. I didn't know how to operate it. <laughs> I'm like, well, this, this, this is going to be fun. I'm going to melt some stuff. But that actually... That was a weird purchase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kiln. Yeah. Like, what are you up to today? I'm just getting a kiln. Uh, yeah. Is that if, an if easy thing to work, buy? If this doesn't work, I'll open up a restaurant. You have a piece in it? <laughs> and put some pizza yeah, down. Yeah, I feel like, is buying, it, where, is buying a kiln kind of a difficult thing to do? Like, is that just saying you just go down to the store and buy a kiln? I have no idea. Well, come on, dude, it's Portugal. We just talked how, how, it, how it's like, you know, there's a lot of there's, ceramics. It's so. true. There's many kiln. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kiln, <laughs> kilners. <laughs> the, ah, the kilner. Yeah. The kilner yeah. of Kishkaj. Yeah, you basically go to the kiln shop around the corner. <laughs> Say, hey, I want to have the green, the green one, or the, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have some canned fish <laughs> and bacalhau. <laughs> it was, a, it was an experience. It was a, it was something that I knew I want to do. I had no training, uh, but I just kept on investing, like, in, investigating, actually studying, doing like uh, some sort of weird archaeology, digging into like books, and I would like, I, I have like so many books on tiles. Uh, and I like reading them and getting to know the story. You know, this it's, is the it's type of things that I think maybe people don't realize is how much research goes into your into your work, whether it's on the street or wherever it is. There's there's a there's a reason that that imagery is there. There's a reason that that color pattern has been yeah. 
chosen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you enjoy? You must do because you have because you spend so much time. Do you enjoy the the research part, or was that kind of like for you? Okay, if I want to if I want to do this seriously, I have to read yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, the research part. I'm gonna be honest. The research part is a little bit love hate. You know, I love it, but it kind of it's difficult to start doing it. You know, because you know, I, I so I'm I'm starting a new project. I'm having all these ideas. But then I want to make it right, you know, I want to make it like connect to the, to the place, connect to the city. So I need to do the research. We're like, oh, but I really wish I could do it this way. But then the research has to be in there to Absolutely. make sense, you know. So it's kind of a love-hate thing. But when, once I get into the research, um, it's really interesting, man. It's really interesting to find out all these, these like uh, the, the colors, the patterns, the shapes, the little stories, the more figurative, the more... Uh, natural, the more fauna, you know, the, the different representations of what different cultures represent in their uh, pattern-based visuals. So what makes your style and the way that you're doing this in the street different to what was done before? Well, that's a good question, actually. That's a good question. You know what? Last year, recent, uh, last year, 2018, early 2000, no, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. early 2018, I did, I self-published a book. You know, and I was lucky enough to have the preface, 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 preface written by the curator of the Tile Museum of Lisbon. You know, it was such an honor, of course. Uh, Alex Alexander is a beautiful person. He just like wrote what he wrote about my work. I had no, I have never read something like that before. And um, he compared what I am doing to what the Portuguese have done um, a few centuries ago, like reinterpreting some other art forms and placing them in the in the tile aesthetic you know stuff like working with leather working with iron uh, working with with the floral elements of, of iron work you know and all of these visual elements they are now present in in, a, in the visuals of the tiles you know and and he compared what was done centuries ago by the portuguese when tile uh, painting was elevated to one of the main arts in portugal alongside with with painting and sculpture uh, there was tile painting, which is uh, which is unique, you know. Um, so he, basically, there was a comparison done, yes, to what I'm doing now, just like placing elements, you know, from my visual references, you know, from cartoons, from from skateboard graphics, from childish things. I'm now 39, and I should care less about well anyway uh, so Wars. all of these <laughs> so all of these elements they are now present in my in my, in, in my work the same way the portuguese did it you know centuries ago so were, were yeah. those artists at the time that were doing the work on the tiles were they considered was it a really blue collar job or were they was it, were they really really sought after craftspeople? there were masters and executors okay. yeah. yeah masters and executors they were like giant factories uh Studios? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. studios. Maybe yeah, yeah, at the time. Yeah, not factories. You know. Yeah, yeah. We're talking a few centuries ago. Because so. I'm always, I'm always curious if like those were the kind of uh, artists that like got lost in time. Like you know, perhaps if uh, we never found out who did skateboarding graphics, or we never yeah, found yeah, how, yeah. who did like the um, the murals around like different parts yeah. of, you know, that were kind of almost like jobs that were given to people that right. were not necessarily considered to be art forms, but. Yeah, I mean, there are um, there is a lot of research uh, uh, about tiles in Portugal, like a lot of research done by universities, done by uh, the Tile Museum. They, they research, they, they, they find out the signatures in, in the tile panels, Amazing. they discover the masters, uh, they discover the, 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 the studios, you know, they discover the, the apprentices. It's, it's really quite something. Uh, it's, it's something that I don't get into, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's too technical for me. It's like uh, like anything uh, um, that is uh, done nowadays, like as in research, uh, every field, for every field has an expert, right? So there are a lot of experts in, uh, in tile research that, you know, could have like, could have been here talking about this better than me, so, you know. Did you find it weird then when you started to read people um, try to theorize and really pick apart what you were just you you were maybe looking at something going okay cool I'm this is what I'm doing and then you read something and someone's like you said you know written four pages about how you do this and just gone wow okay oh, that's right that is what I do yeah. but I never thought of it in that yeah. way yeah no I mean it's 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 surprising um, I, I I wasn't paying much attention to your question sorry well <laughs> I wasn't. I was trying to understand what you were asking. 
But that I wasn't. That's an actual question, I guess. Yeah, I think it was more like a, a, a starting more, sentence to something. It was more just a well, statement. About it. Uh, yeah, well, I think, right? It's It's got to be. That's, I thought it was a good question, actually, because I think it's. <laughs> yeah, because I think. I'm sorry. I think, um, I'm so sorry. You've taken on the task of doing something that's so known for, to the country you're you're in, right. and you're taking it around the world and reinterpreting it mm-hmm. in so many different ways. Like somebody, there is a lot of academ- academia yes. around that. Yes. That once you've realized, oh my god, I'm in. A, I've just been explained in a way that like I would oh, never contextualize myself. Yes. Thank it you for fits. the bad question. Thank you for the good question. Uh, sorry, Doug. One each? No. <laughs> no, 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 but it's good. I got it. I got it. I got it. And, and you know, it's, it's, <laughs> I, it's like someone uh, takes like a, 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 dives into my work or, you know, someone dives into what uh, an artist's practice is and like kind of dissects it and shows you ways that, you know, shows me ways, sh- shows me things within my work that I'm, kind of putting there but I thought that people will never get it or right. yeah, yeah. that I'm like sometimes unconsciously putting there I'm like oh yeah that's exactly what I meant and never thought you know so yeah I, I just uh, and there are the the, the academic the more academic people of course and and it's so satisfying uh, school papers man it's uh, it's so cool it's so cool like people reach out to me kids uh, high school kids a college you know and they're like oh you know, we got to work, we got to do this paper on street art and you're like, my favorite artist, so you know, can we do something, can I interview you? Like, I mean, it's so, I never thought this would happen, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing, it's so interesting, you know, yeah. And then I tell him, no. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, no. there's a no. You can, you can come and work for me for free. Yes, uh, no, you get to know you everything. Can, you can make these titles for me, you get no <laughs> oh, credit. That's uh, a sensitive uh, subject this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to gloss over Oh my that. God. That's cut. Cuts. Oh man! Oh. Um, did you have a question? Uh, I was. I was gonna actually. I was interested because we we haven't really talked about. Firstly, we haven't actually described what you do. So if you're listening to this, hopefully you've got some kind of understanding of, <laughs> just put of some what Diego does. Just, some. just understand this is take two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Our interview yesterday was magnificent. Hopefully yes. you've looked yes, it over was. it and you understand. But no, what, no, no. where does, and this is possibly something that I assume you know because you've researched this stuff. Yeah. Um, where, why is tile culture so prevalent in Portugal? Uh... 13th century or something around that. I'm, I don't know. I'm not an oh, historian. Now he's, now he's name dropping centuries. Yeah, yeah, no, no, sudden. something like this. <laughs> we want exact dates. I, I, September uh, it the was second. A cold day of November, <laughs> back in 12th. Um, so, the the I, 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 I how do you call it in, in English? Iberic Peninsula, where yeah. Portugal and Spain yeah. are now. Is it Iberic? I, I, Iberic? I, I, oh, yeah. Iberian Peninsula. Iberian. Yeah, yeah. All right, you guys twist up all the names. Anyway, just say it in Portuguese. Um, Portuguese. Peninsula Ibérica, you know, the place used to belong to the Moorish, you know. So were they hungry? Yes, they were Moorish. Mm-hmm. Moorish. Should no. we cut? Yeah, that's <laughs> all right. <laughs> that joke's that joke's probably not gonna get in. <laughs> shit. So yes, I mean, yeah, that peninsula used to belong to the Moorish, and there was this. Ah, this is a history lesson, dude. <laughs> this is why I failed the school. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. And you know, there there was these kingdoms of of Christians. Like I don't can I, I cannot drop names now, but they started to conquer the peninsula to the Moors, like conquering all the way down. Uh, at one point, the kingdom split Spain, Portugal. I don't know if this was a name at the time. I don't think so. But then we started to conquer. But that's why Portugal is a rectangle, by the way. We started conquering north, then we conquer all the way down. We got into the water and it's like, well, our country's done. This is the water. Our country is like a rectangle now. Take that, Spain. Yeah. <laughs> Take that, Spain. We got a slow, small little bit of land compared to your massive country. <laughs> We've got coast though, baby. Yeah. We've got yeah, coast. A lot of coast. So anyway, uh, the, the Moorish have been like, uh, you know, the Islamic cultures has always been like beautifully rich with, with, with ceramic and tiles and patterns. It's just geometric, geometric wonders. You know, it's, there's mathematic in there. It's beautiful. Um, so we have all these like old mosques that were converted into churches, you know. Bro. So we have all this heritage left from the Moors, and you well, you know, the Portuguese in a good sense, like I do now, they like well, we could make this our own, kind of in a way of what I do now, I could do this my own. So yeah, we kind of adapted the style of the, of, of the tile pattern to uh, we like um, embedded it in our culture. That's why it's so strong. So it, wow, it really goes back that far. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Why does this is possibly a stupid question, but we've 
we, we've, we've already done. been there, so I, I'm not really risking I think, much. I think the video for this interview is going to be way better than anyone we've done. If Just you are the, listening, <laughs> check out on the on the internet. Uh, so, why when you said Peninsula Iberica, say it again. Peninsula Iberica. Yes. Why does the Portuguese language sound so similar to Eastern European? Yes, that uh, absolutely. I don't know. It's, I thought you were. Spe- I mean, it literally sounded like you were speaking Russian earlier. I, I know. I, it's. It's. <laughs> Do you know? It, I, I don't know why. It's our accent. Thing. You know. You know. Portuguese is spoken in a lot of countries, right? Right. It's yeah, spoken yeah. in a lot of countries in Africa. It's spoken in a lot of. Uh, it's spoken in Brazil. Uh, we are some really bad conquerors back in the day, so I don't want to get into that. Uh, but it's a language that is spoken in a lot of countries, and ours. Um, <laughs> What's your favorite <laughs> country that your country has colonized? <laughs> You've been hitting it hard recently. Yeah. You, like we we kind of touched on this earlier. The last the last two years for you have just seen this this huge trajectory. How do you maintain this balance? Because I think there's there's a common phrase I hear a lot in art shows here and people talk about burnout yeah yeah. and it it is such a real thing and you Mm -hmm. see how hard how much people are traveling and how demanding this scene this lifestyle can be on you physically mentally um in the relationships that you forge how how do you find that balance and how do you maintain some some degree of 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 level-headedness and and feet on the ground and Uh, reality uh, i mean um well i'm i'm very fortunate to have uh um a good support back home you know I my fiance she's like she's the first one to tell me you shouldn't go because I don't want to I don't want you to go but then she's also the first one to say but you need to go it's your job and I'll be here so I feel like you know my fiance has been like the rock for me in all this you know um, hello fiance do, are we doing the thing where we point to the camera yeah I, I, right. I don't know I feel time yeah. so you okay. feel free have, all right. have, have a crack alright then yes wait hold on uh, hold on Jeffrey Deitch is flying away is it, a, is it a Jerry Bruckheimer movie they're shooting here and no, blowing up just, the bridge or what? It, oh, that's a Gagosian. That's Gagosian. Sorry. I got the... The color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, art, so, art jokes. Yes. So what I do is I try to take um, always uh, some time between each project. Uh, if Well, I know my practice... Uh, I need to do it because it's stencil work, so I need to prepare stencils for each for each wall, for each mural, for each project. So I always need some time in between. I cannot do the backpack thing from one project to the other. Um, so I always take a, try at least to get like a minimum like three four days, uh, one week back in Portugal. Um, I you know luckily now I have the support of my team. You know we are more a little bit more. We can like get things done. We can get um, you know it allows me to create focused on creating my work and not worrying so much about all the other details and uh, you know I do have a really good uh, uh, f- family uh, structure you know my fiance she's as I, as I was saying you know she, she's, she's, she's the first one to say you know I don't want you to go but you need to go so I don't want to miss you but it's your job you know and she's been supportive since day one you know since day one that I started to work uh, and travel and um, you know I just feel blessed like that and you know it, it, it's it's I think it's about maintaining balance in the end you know and and it's not and we were talking about this previously it's not it's about also like not saying yes to everything you know if you say yes to everything you're gonna burn out you're gonna burn out because your work is gonna be everywhere and people are gonna like oh that's another add fuel to the fire oh sorry add fuel uh, Diogo well, whatever that guy's name is right in there you know so you want to keep it fresh you want to keep the time or try to have the time to you know consider and think about each project so i think it's a matter of balance and uh it gets difficult it's difficult to do that but i think it's also you know don't uh, it's about you know of course riding the wave you know you're getting all these uh like projects coming in you go oh there's a show here there's a collective show there there's a mural uh, there's a nice project but you know you got to balance it out you got to say yes you got to say no you got to like People are, if, if, if I, I came to understand this, it's like, if people, if people want to work with you, they'll reschedule. Even for just like two weeks or whatever, they'll reschedule, they'll make it fit your schedule. So, you know, it's all about balance. It's all about talking to people, having support, of course, uh, trying to keep a clear head. That's the most difficult one, but, you know, yeah. So you, so you, you are uh, a fiancé? 
you did the yeah. you were got down on one knee yes how, how did that correct. feel oh. like just between us boys Wait. Yeah. just between us boys I don't want to talk to you to that about you guys you non Star Wars loving guys I, I proposed in Disneyland think, Star Wars. I think, dude. Wait, I saying, I think, yeah, I think you need to tell the story because it's amazing. Yeah, so we if, were, you're, uh, if you're if you're allowed to, yeah, I, of course I, you should. I am, I am. But but talking to you about this, and even that guy, you know, my buddy Adrian is there. He has never seen one of the movies, so I don't know why I should I fire that we're guy. Like the, we're, we're, we're like the worst. We're the worst, worst <laughs> company ever. But whatever. Um, yeah, but we, anyway, we I don't went. like Star Wars. I don't understand. Like no, it's not. I, yeah, uh, I, I, I think you're you will now have like. 200,000 less subscribers to your <laughs> podcast so be careful to let us know in saying. the comments everybody Star Wars overrated uh, trash or oh my kind God, of I'm good. leaving bye bye I'm leaving cut that part out so, thank you so you <laughs> thank got you. down on one knee at uh, Star Wars Disneyland I didn't yes, even know there was yes, a Star Wars Disneyland it's called uh, Galaxy's Edge and it's awesome and it's in Anaheim California I, I was there with my girlfriend at the time and we went there and uh so she's now my fiance because I proposed in the front of the Millennium Falcon. There you go. I don't know. Well, you don't know what the Millennium Falcon is, but it's all the bird. people that are, yes, obviously. And all the people that are listening will know what the Millennium Falcon is and think, my God, this guy is such a nerd or this guy is such a cool nerd. I don't know. Some people will. They'll be like, he's I my guy really, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> like, oh man, that fuel. <laughs> Star Wars well, for life. I mean, <laughs> at, least you're, at least we now know your fiance likes Star Wars too. She does. Okay. Well, she does. There was like a whole <laughs> crying. That's, that's what I want to know. Oh. No, no. I kind of wanted a fancy restaurant on top of a mountain. Or like, I wanted Peter Pan. Like, what is this? No. Nope, nope, no, no, mm. we're nerdy like that. And uh, I, well, I was like, well, yeah, Star Wars. What? I'm gonna marry you, girl. Uh, uh, That's yes. beautiful. <laughs> and, uh, do you see yourself set? I'm obviously settling down, but doing the doing the family thing. You gonna? There's an option for sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not getting younger, but that's not. That's not the reason, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's thought, going to add fuel to he's the gonna fire. Add a little baby fuel. I'm, 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 I'll try. I don't know if this works. By the way, I'm getting older, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> I want to get off. I want to get off the family topic for a second. I'm wondering if you have some work here in Miami, some some pieces that you um, you did in your studio and you and you shipped over and yeah. shown. Yeah. In the middle of the process of building a almost a hundred pound piece of work, which we calculated. Yes, we calculated. Uh, ever think to yourself, you're like, wow, um, there's got to be a different way to do this <laughs> or like in the middle of it do, do you ever get um, slightly self-conscious of the fact that you're building this massive work like yeah, are there parts of it like, I could have found an easier way to do this I know I know no the thing is you know I, I as a mount for the, for the ceramic panels um, I, 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 I don't know the name in English I use this special kind of wood doesn't bend doesn't um, doesn't bend with time because you know the, the, the ceramic tiles oh, the, the they the just call that wood what well, wood is oh, such a cool graffiti name? Wood, by the way. I wish Sorry. I could have uh, <laughs> kept it. used that uh, when I was younger. Um, so anyway, I, I yeah, this this special kind of material. Um, it doesn't bend with time. It doesn't like um, so. And this goes along with the nature of the piece. You know, it's a ceramic tile piece. The colors will not will not fade away. Uh, it, it's going to last for hopefully centuries. Um, like a long, really long time. So I wanted to have like the, the best kind of material um, to 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 um, create the panel in, right? Um, there are other options which at this point are a little uh, complicated for me to get into because it's like spacecraft, uh, you know, uh, aeronautical metal which is lighter and super resistant. But I really need maybe to check into that. But at this point. Uh, yeah, I know that I've been doing like really massive, <laughs> massively. I just, when you said it was like four pieces, and we we calculated amounts, like that's like five hundred pounds of paint. Yeah, just yeah, it's a lot. Across for, the world, for you Europeans out there, it's like what two two hundred kilograms, something like that. Two hundred fifty. Wow. Yeah, I, I had no concept of what pounds were. Yeah, yeah but it's it's, like, it's, it's quite it a lot. I think each piece is currency. like sixty kilograms, so six, twelve, two hundred forty kilograms, something like that, were shipped here. So, so uh, yeah. you did you have previously dabbled in other crafts haven't you you did embroidery yeah yeah, at, least, yeah. at least one piece i know of yeah i did embroidery uh what, what was that uh what was the reasoning behind that and um and why was there only one, <laughs> one brief moment i assume I, I, there was a reason yeah Hang on mean, two seconds shut the up hey crow go away <laughs> 
Nah, he's not going anywhere. No, he's not going uh, anywhere. Apologies, we are now doing this on Friday night. There's like loads of background noise, and now we've got a, a family of birds now joining us. So that, that's what it is. <laughs> I'm going to get back to your em- your, statement, your point because uh, I want to know about this embroidery. Em- embroidery. Well, it happened, yes. And uh, back in 2016, I did a show with Underdogs back in Lisbon. Um, I wanted, you know, in my shows, I like, hey, shut up, you bird. That doesn't, it's not going to work. Um, back in 2016, I, I did a show in Underdogs. I wanted to uh, try something different other than, you know, reinterpreting or, or connecting with uh, the tile aesthetic. So I wanted to connect with some other um, ancient, uh, old technique, let's call it like this, like old craft. So I tried out embroidery. Uh, I like the result. I even mix it uh, with some tile patterns. So there was like tile uh, patterns made out of embroidery. It was interesting. I liked it a lot. Something that I haven't explored um, again, but there's something in the works for early 2020 for a new show that might have embroidery again. Oh, yes. we got the money there. <laughs> Didn't get that in the last podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Do you tend to have older collectors? And when I say that, people who are a little bit more perhaps attached or matured towards more like this kind of more craft centric right. kind of history, or, or do you have a good connection with like a younger generation of collectors that are um, maybe a little bit more astute? That is actually a, a very good question, and the answer is both. You know, my work connects. Um, in both ways to uh, different people, you know, to younger people or, or younger as in our age or even younger because of like the details and all this. And it connects to older people because, you know, it kind of uh, reminds them of like the ancient or, but in a way to younger people, it also like reminds them of their grandfather, grandfather's, uh, grandmother's house and all this. So there's like many ways that, that my work, I feel that, that my work connects to people right and in, in, in so many different ways and so many different generations you know I've, I've had a uh, there was in one occasion I was I was painting in this I was painting a mural and uh, there was this um, this uh, young kid like with, with her uh, grand grandmother and you know the the young kid said hey look there's there's this nice uh, character like this nice skull or something I, I don't remember exactly so but she saw the the details she saw the character and the the, the older lady she saw oh that's a nice tile um, uh, painting, you know, so it connects to people like this, like so many like different levels, you know. Right. It just to follow up in in America and in the UK. I mean, there was this, this movement in like the middle aughts of people going really back into craft. Um, it was well, I I, I want to make my own ceramic cups. I want to uh, hand make my own clothes. I want to make my own leather goods. Like there was right. a really a, a revival of more handmade goods. What, did that happen in Portugal as well? Um, or there, are you that, just that, the one carrying no, the torch? No, no, no. That happened um, a few years ago. We had a, a, a strong economic crisis, which uh, you know um, made people reach out to other ways you know try to find out other ways to make money you know because people were losing their jobs and so you know they, they were like studying uh, not studying um trying to figure out different ways to do other crafts and other things which allow them to get more income through another way so there were a lot of people like doing like um self-made uh, self-made uh, t-shirts is that the name or yeah, yeah, you yeah. know and and like a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of Things that you know, maybe they would like pick up from like doing a, cl- a little clay mug or a little, and they just like sell it online to get that extra cash. You know, I think that was the movement. I'm not sure if it was by a by a, like a trendy thing or whatever, but that was the the, the reason that happened in Portugal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, are there particular street artists um, um, yeah, it, that are your contemporaries? Because uh, that's part one part of your practice that you do. Can, you know, muralism yep. um, that you find a kinship with because you aren't the most uh, figurative of, of painters. Right, right, are there right. certain people that you, um, peers of yours, that you really are fascinated by their practice as well because it's a little bit more on the abstract side or just pattern making in general? Yeah, I mean, um, let me just be honest. Uh, I am the worst with names. I do so really... Am I. Yeah, I, I am the worst with names. Like remembering artists' names, I am the worst. I follow a lot of artists. Well, you know, I follow what they do. I love uh, a lot of what's happening right now. I mean, it's like so much quality. Um, I'm 
I would like to consider myself like friends with a lot of them and people I really appreciate their work uh, but there is not one in particular that goes like oh this is my influence you know I uh, because I think that if that also happened uh, I wouldn't be able to do what I do because my work would have would would have been like maybe stuck too much too close to my main influence so what I try to do is like keep informed keep visually informed of what's going on you know uh, but don't follow a specific trend like figurative because my work has figurative a little bit on it so I follow the abstract because my work has abstract follow patterns you know it's, it's I, I, I try to keep up you know but with your work there is such a connection to your heritage your history your culture of Portugal and of course it mixes in with other places if you're painting or creating in another location right and for me as a as like an art geek that's that's the bit that I like oh that's the meat that's the bit that I love I love this idea of the culture and things like that and I think that for a lot of the Portuguese audience that mm -hmm. you have yeah that's the bit that they attach on to because it gives them that sense of kind of like local pride right do you think that this for the younger generation is that that pride of of local culture is something that people discover just naturally as they grow older or is it something that's now just becoming maybe talked about more as there's maybe more of an open dialogue about celebrating culture and where you come from and not following a particular you know the, this is the mtv pattern that you're told yeah this is yeah, what, yeah this is what yeah. is cool this is what you must look like and people are now maybe a bit more aware of history of culture and things like that yeah i you know what i would like to i would like to believe and i would like to honestly believe that uh the younger generations are like uh looking back into uh, and and trying to create their own their own pace their own rhythm their own their own um you know ideas but I, I but i can't i mean i just can't i i feel that we live in like a so like globalized fast-paced society where everything everyone just follows each other like sheep you know if there's one guy who's like influencer come on dude what 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 is that are you like an influencer you like influence people to do other things just because you have this amount of followers and and yeah man but that happens and like people follow that and it's like I, it, it's I don't know it's it, it's and and you know it, it it kind of annoys me i wish i could say that yeah you know people like younger kids younger generations and i'm sorry younger kids and younger generations but it is true you guys just like following like this is my opinion they're like following each other and i, I mean i'm also like being a little bit hypocrite of course when i was when i was younger i would want to have those tennis shoes you know the sneakers of course with, with my colleagues at high school we all want to wear though the same thing that was like fashion but nowadays it's like so intense you know it's like so like everyone does like the same every all, all these kids like do the same thing follow the same listen to the same music follow the same you know dressing like dress the same way and it's like um you know try to try to think for yourself a little bit you know think think outside the box don't follow the the, the you know all these cliches you know all of these cliches yeah. you know you know it's it's funny it's weird to me maybe based on your work that you're talking about that you're a star wars fan I don't know why that kind of seems surprising to me, but I mean, there are these characters and these elements of your work that are yeah. playful and that, that are very contemporary. Right. Um, what other sort of perhaps creative things got you interested in thinking that you could be an artist yourself? Um, you know, as I mentioned, I've always been like drawing. And when I was a kid, I was really, really into um, Japanese uh, uh, manga comics, yeah. you know? and also the cartoons uh the anime you know i really like that style and i would like copy that from Were those hard to get uh in portugal well we had all of the like a lot of um a lot of the the, the cartoons we had them a lot the comic books not so much like the really original like black and white ones not that much but i was you know i i I grew up with my my cousin. You know, my cousin has been always like a, a older brother to me, and he's you no know, he, he 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 always introduced me to a lot of different things. You know, he, and he had all these things. That's why I was like my like looking at that all the time. So um, that was like a big influence for me, and I was like copying that, copying those those comic those those comic books. You know, copying like I would like put put like transparent paper on top of the TV, like freeze frame the the, the, the video, and like copy the thing, and, like color it, and you know, it's 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 always uh, it's always been like a thing for me, like drawing. 
doing, you know, having this, um, going a little bit against, against what I said previously, as I don't have a contemporary artist that I follow, but I'm a very big fan of Jim Phillips, you know, the, the artist that created all of these skateboard graphics, right. you know, so it's, flaming it, hand. it's, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. From yeah. The, 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 that, uh, that comment there about freeze framing the TV and using tracing paper, was that a common thing? Because I've never heard that before. Uh, the, I don't know. I did it. Where did you uh, learn did this you? technique? So uh, we, we we would record the the in VHS. You know, uh, we would record the episodes, the, t the cartoon episodes from the TV, and then you would play it back, freeze it, and just put transparent paper and like it's, draw it. You are you are king of the geeks. That is <laughs> no. That is <laughs> that is such a good I love insight that. and tidbit though. Yeah, about, but yeah that's what yeah. happened. You know, and. Uh, um, yeah, and I've always been drawing. I've always had these these influences, and and I've always like really, really much enjoyed um, creating universes. You know, so I would like draw like uh, a little like uh, more like anime character, and then I would like look at my Eman toys and just like cop copy a little bit of the Eman and place it there. So I would, like create these drawing mixes. Uh, you know, I think that's also you know where my 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 drawing like my original uh, like let's call it the ad fuel universe uh, comes from. You know, like a big mix of a lot of different styles. You know, uh, just put it all together and see if it works. <laughs> so the name does fit you. I it's just add some fuel. It's the perfect name. <laughs> we discovered it. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic work, Diogo. Thank you. So for much. taking some time once again to Thank sit down so with much. us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate My that. My pleasure.